Yo, what's going on guys? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Sony a7S III. Now that's really weird for me to say because if this is your guys' first time on this channel, I've been shooting on the Canon R5 now since the day it launched, so for about eight months. Now at this point, I think there's no surprise that there have been some problems with the Canon R5 or maybe some drawbacks about it. I actually recently just dropped a video talking about some things that I wish I knew about that camera before I purchased it. And I actually tried to replicate that exact angle from that video because that video it was shot on the Sony a7S III, and this video is being shot on the Canon R5. So it should be almost the same exact angle with the same settings and everything. So you guys kind of let me know, maybe you want to throw that video up side by side and kind of compare how they look next to each other. Now this isn't going to be a full in-depth review of this camera. Maybe that's something I'll do further down the line once I get a little bit more time with it. But I thought it'd be kind of fun and interesting to hear my thoughts about this camera since I've been using it for the past four or five days and kind of comparing it to the Canon R5, even though there's a couple reasons why it shouldn't be a direct comparison. The R5 is definitely more photo dominant. This is more for a video, but honestly, it's kind of the two camera systems that I would consider if I was picking a camera up right now. So actually, as I've been using this camera for the last few days, if something has popped up to me that I notice is dramatically different than the R5, whether good or bad, I've actually written it down. So I kind of just want to go through some notes that I have here about some big differences that I've noticed right off the bat about the a7S III compared to the Canon R5. Now, if this is your guys' first time on this channel, my name is Johnny. I do video and photo work professionally for a living, and I should mention within that, I use both Canon cameras and Sony's quite often, so I'm not exactly brand loyal. I actually started this channel on a Sony. I now am shooting Canon, and who knows what the future holds. So if this is your guys' first time on this channel, be sure to drop this video a thumbs up and also subscribe if you guys wanna see any more future uploads from me. Now, a really big thing about this camera that I noticed right off the bat that is a huge thing and I wanted to try it out for myself, and that is the fact that I could actually just edit the footage out of this camera. So on the Sony a7S III, there's a bunch of different codecs or recording formats. Some are more compressed, some are less compressed, some might be a little bit higher quality, all that kind of stuff, but more importantly, there are just certain recording formats that you can choose that makes it more manageable to actually edit that footage. Currently on the R5, unless you're on an M1 Mac and currently editing in Resolve or Final Cut, Premiere Pro hasn't been updated yet. You pretty much always have to make proxies. You aren't gonna be able to play back your footage whatsoever in Premiere Pro. So if you're on the R5, proxies are currently life, but on the Sony a7S III, it's kind of weird because I've been so used to that proxy workflow. I shot stuff on this and then I actually just dumped the card onto my hard drive and I was editing this video like 10 minutes later. I didn't even have to make proxies, which was just so damn nice to have again. Now, another big thing, which I actually mentioned in that Canon R5, like the watch before you buy video, I was just mentioning on the Canon R5, there is that IBIS wobble going on. So the IBIS in the R5 is so strong that if you're filming at a really wide angle, it kind of gives this weird warping wonky effect. I'm really not a fan of it at all. I think it looks really gross. I would never use any footage that is affected by that. And on the Sony a7S III, the IBIS in this camera is not that strong. So you don't get any of that warping. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, that's in a really positive way. It's not as strong. I think it still gives you a tiny bit of stabilization, but I would much rather have uh, no stabilization as long as I'm getting none of that wonky warping IBIS wobble because it looks so bad. And while we're on the topic of stabilization here real quick, both Sony and Canon kind of have these digital stabilizations in the camera bodies. On the Canon, I think it's called digital stabilization. So on the Sony, you can either have steady shot turned off, you can have steady shot turned on, I believe they call it, yeah, just standard, um, or you can have it on the active. So the active just crops in a little bit more. It tries to really smooth out those big bumps. And on the Canon, it's basically the same. You can either have digital image stabilization turned off, you can have it on or on like the higher, more stabilized mode. Honestly, on the Canon, the digital IS is pretty good just on the standard. When you go into the advanced one, I personally think it's too much. You get some weird kind of wonky effect. The active steady shot on the Sony, I think is definitely way better and looks more natural than the stronger version of the digital IS on the Canon. Now, yet again, another thing that I mentioned in that R5 video that I wasn't too happy about the Canon right now is just the overheating. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that because everyone out there has already done the tests on the Sony. So there's no worries about the overheating whatsoever when you're recording, which is just so nice. You don't have to worry about that. Like I said before, I don't really run into too many situations on the R5, but at the end of the day, it comes down to if I was going on a 
shoot with a client. Would I feel comfortable bringing the R5 with me? Honestly, I wouldn't because I never wanna have the chance of something to overheat, even if it hasn't really affected me too much currently. If it's an important shoot for money, there's just no way I can have a camera that I can't rely on. So on the Sony, it's just nice not ever having to think about the overheating. Now, a couple of small things on the Sony that I've been a fan of so far is I really like these flap covers or port covers, whatever you wanna call them on the side here. I like how they kind of just um, pop out to the side. They don't jangle around or anything like that. It's not too bad on the Canon, but it's just nice that this one doesn't dangle down like it does on my R5. Another thing I've noticed is the card slots are actually nice on the Sony. Um, I like that we have the dual card slots. Um, and they are matching. So I can have the same type of memory cards uh, in both slots if I want to. It's kind of weird on the R5, you have two card slots, but they take different cards. So you can either choose a CF Express or an SD um, or one of each. So I love that the memory card slots match on this one. Also, they can take the two different types of cards. They can take the CF Express and SD in each slot. So that's super awesome. I love that they thought of that. And also you can open the card slot while the camera's on and it doesn't turn off the camera. On the Canon, if you open up the memory card slot, it actually turns off the camera, which then it will just default to some of my custom shooting settings that whatever I was on before. So I just have to keep that in mind. Um, if you know I put a new memory card in or have to pop it open real quick, sometimes my settings will change back to what it previously was. So I just need to double check it real quick. It's pretty annoying. So it's nice in this one. It just doesn't turn off the camera. And that's just like a really weird quirk about the Canon cameras. Also, speaking of course of the Canon cameras right now, I feel like this is turning into a vent session about my Canon, which it's really not. It's just honestly things that I noticed right away after using this Sony. But it is really nice that it doesn't have the 30 minute record limit like the Canon R5. Not all the time, but in my professional line of work, easily sometimes you're doing interviews for longer than 30 minutes. And I remember the days when we were shooting on like 1DXs and stuff years ago, where you would have to kind of time up with the person you're interviewing so you can stop the recording and then start a new recording if you're getting near that 30 minute mark. And it's just nice that I can sit down hit record on this and I can just let it roll. I don't have to try to look over and see how much time I have left at all. And also I do plan on having some maybe different type of videos for me um, on my channel here sometime in the future that I could see myself wanting more than a 30 minute record time and I just don't wanna have to think about it or worry about it. Now the last big thing about this Sony that I was actually really shocked by, which maybe I shouldn't have been so shocked by, but I definitely was, and that is just how good at low light this camera is. I never thought my Canon R5 was bad in low light whatsoever, and I still don't think it is bad, but I shoot a lot here in my office. So once I was shooting some B-roll with this camera for another video coming out, hopefully pretty soon, I couldn't believe how clean the footage looked from even pretty high ISOs. Like even like a couple things I shot in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, my ISO was up like near 2000. I mean, it looked incredible. So it's, it's kind of crazy. I never thought the R5, the low light was bad about it until I used the Sony. Um, and this one just blows it out of the water, which is no big surprise because the Sony S line is always killer in low lights and that 12 megapixels in this camera just means it's better in low light. So it's not a surprise, but it definitely did still surprise me. And I'm actually shocked that I noticed that big of a difference, but I guess it kind of makes sense because I shoot in here all the time and I've really been almost exclusively shooting on the R5 in here. So it was a dramatic difference looking at the two kind of back to back. All right, so that's a lot of stuff about the Sony that I noticed about it. And I think all of those things are, yeah, all of those things are improvements from the Canon R5 or things I like more than they are on the Canon. But there definitely are a few things that I prefer on the Canon R5, but I gotta be honest, the list is much shorter. Now, one thing that's obvious is on the R5, um, it's obviously higher megapixel. And as I mentioned, that's not a fair comparison comparison between these two cameras. This is meant for video first. The R5, in my opinion, is meant for photo first. It's just also good at photography, but I'm just mentioning this because these are the two cameras that I'm honestly kind of considering going between. So I at least want to mention that. If I did end up going into the Sony ecosystem, I would probably get two camera bodies. I would have this S3, and then I would probably either go with maybe the R4 or the A7 IV whenever that one does come out. Um, so I think I would keep this one just specific for or video um, and of course yes 12 megapixels is plenty fine if I wanted to grab like an Instagram photo or something like that as well but I do enjoy the fact that the R5 can kind of do both at a really really high quality 
but that does come with its quirks, obviously, that I've mentioned. The next thing is I honestly just love how the Canon R5 feels in my hand. I think it's one of the best looking cameras out on the market. That with the RF lenses look absolutely amazing. They feel great in your hand. The grip is super comfortable. It's definitely a camera that gets me excited to pick it up. Now, is that a very important thing at the end of the day, if it's just a tool to get your job done? Maybe not, but if you're definitely someone like myself and you do a lot of personal content in your evenings or on the weekends and things like that, every little thing that kind of gets you excited to get to work and kind of pick up your camera does go a long way. Also, something I noticed right off the bat, kind of having the two back to back, is the LCD screen on the R5 is bigger and I think it just looks a little bit better. Um, included with that, I would just kind of group in here that I like the on-screen controls a lot better on the Canon. And I'm not talking the menu system. In fact, I think the menu system is really good on the Sony. Some people hate on that for whatever reason, just because it's different. If you can't figure out the menu system on a camera, I don't know, maybe you just need to get better at your craft because it's really not that hard. You just have to learn that maybe some things have a little bit different of terminology. But what I was talking about was the on-screen controls. So like on the Canon, if you hit the Q button or on the Sony, if you hit the function button, it kind of just brings up the different frame rates or your white balance, what your focusing mode is, that type of stuff. Um, I just like how it looks on the Canon a little bit better. It's a little bit more clean in my opinion. It doesn't seem as busy, which maybe that really comes down to, I'm just not as familiar with the Sony um, system yet um, and some of the controls, but I think it does just look a little bit better. It makes a little more sense to my head uh, on the Canon and the screen is a little bit bigger. Um, and I just like that one a little bit more. Now, last thing I just want to mention about the Canon is I really like their lenses. Obviously they've been making lenses for a crazy long time. So their lineup is ridiculous, but these new RF lenses they've been coming out with for the mirrorless line are just absolutely incredible. Like this 15 to 35 image stabilized lens is just a total game changer. It's beautiful. Honestly, the RF lenses are something to be really excited about for the future of Canon cameras. So lenses, honestly, there's so many good ones these days, but some of the Canon glass is just really, really good. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Those are some of the things I've noticed right off the bat of me using the Sony a7S III for a few days now. I'm definitely gonna be doing some more testing with it here in the future. Um, and be sure to check out um, some of the future videos coming because uh, some of them, at least some of the stuff is gonna be shot on this. Some's gonna still be shot on the R5 and then we'll kind of see what I'm gonna do moving into the future. All right guys, so I hope this video didn't end up being way too long, but you know what, I, I honestly don't even care. I just kind of wanna get some of these thoughts out there because I know last year a ton of people were, were comparing these two cameras, kind of giving their overall thoughts on it. And even though I don't think it's a direct fair comparison between the two. They are the two cameras that I'm honestly kind of considering going between. Um, I think the Canon has some benefits. I think the Sony has some benefits. And right now, some things are maybe just leaning a little bit more towards the Sony um, for what would kind of fit my workflow and save me a ton of time and actually make my stuff look better the way I shoot. So guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Um, do you think I'm insane even testing out the Sony? Do you think it makes a little bit more sense for what I'm doing? Should I stick with the Canon R5 and try to keep it friendly here, okay? So I'm actually gonna get back to editing now. I have some footage that I shot with the Sony that I wanna dive into a little bit more. But guys, if you did enjoy today's video, will you please drop it a thumbs up? If you're new around here, consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps the channel out and I notice each and every single one. But guys, that's gonna be it for me. I'll catch you in the next one very, very soon. Peace, guys.